Petco Park, the field, the fans, and the baseball fire. We're all set. Atlanta in town, first of three. Some extra early work today for the man leading the butt race in home runs and RBIs, Matt Kemp. He's hit four homers the last 12 games. And it's Nick Markakis leading the way for the rebuilding Atlanta Braves. His 31 runs batted in, leading Atlanta. And we welcome you to Petco. And here's the pitching matchup tonight. The live left-hander Christian Friedrich for the Padres and the portly right-hander Williams Perez and that's right Williams uh, with an S Perez on the mound for the Atlanta Braves <laughs> and, and you know what they say never trust a guy with two last names or first names and your name while well, you're looking at one Mark Grant can go either way oh, first yeah. or last so you, never you, trust a guy with two first no, names. No I not only trust them usually means a sign of wealth. That oh you okay come I from got money, you. Money. Absolutely well, hopefully wealthy tonight tonight for San Diego. Well the uh, Atlanta's been money for the Padres when they play here. That's a good way of putting it because when you look at the last 10 games folks of the Braves playing here at Petco Park you're going over to 13 14 and 15 those years right because it's usually a three game four game series. So over that time, you know, the Padres have put together strings of hits that have been very, very nice. But also, when I look at this, the runs have come into play, almost six runs, but they've had better pitching in those years. 13, 14, 15 was a little, you know, dicey at once in a while. But the, the Padres have basically had better pitching than the Braves have those three years, the last 10 games here at Petco Park. So hopefully they can keep it going tonight with Christian Friedrich and uh, score some runs tonight. Well, and in this uh, three-game series, Atlanta comes to town with the worst batting average as a team in the major leagues. They've hit the fewest home runs, and they've only won 20 ball games. So this is a time for the Padres to look for a sweep. Yeah, uh, the Braves are really down in the doldrums right now, and a chance for Christian Friedrich to really have some more progress because that's been the one word for the left-hander. The last two starts, great numbers, a 2-2-5 ERA. He's made some adjustments with the command of the fastball. On the glove side, staying down in the zone, going up by design. Let's see what he does tonight. How about a scouting report? Who better than Melvin Upton? He played for the Braves a couple of years. He'll be with Julie Alexandria when we return to Petco Park.
Welcome back to Petco Park. Padres and Braves about to get underway in just a moment. But first, one player who is very familiar with the Braves team, that would be Melvin Upton Jr. having had played in Atlanta for the 2013 and 2014 season. And of course, anytime you face a former team, it could bring on a range of emotions, as he told me before the game tonight. It's just uh, it's another team, man. I mean, obviously I was there. Uh, didn't have very much success there, but um, yeah, nothing more than that. It's just uh, it's another team, uh, another series. Does it give you more of an incentive knowing that you, you know, look back with a, a certain view on the team and your experience there? Um, no, nah, man, I'm just uh, here to play baseball no matter who it is. Um, like I said, it's, it's unfortunate that it went the way it did, but um, it's the past. Uh, I'm San Diego Padre, and uh, that's who I play for. Anyone you're looking forward to seeing like this in town now? Oh, definitely. Freddie Freeman is one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, great teammate, great guy. And uh, yeah, we, we talk from time to time as much as we can, but uh, definitely, uh, definitely a friend. Always a highlight seeing ex-teammates. Of course, they were very good friends from a while ago. When we come back, the Atlanta Braves visit the San Diego Padres. This game starts just now. Padres Baseball, brought to you by Pinnacle on the Park. Make your new home right here. Visit PinnacleOnThePark.com for details. By Petco, your complete pet store. By Sony, the leader of 4K Ultra HD. And by Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. So we're set to go here at Petco, the first of three. The Padres and the Atlanta Braves encountering action for the first time this year. And as we've already mentioned, uh, the Padres take the field knowing that they've got quite a streak going against Atlanta here in San Diego. They've won the last 10 games in a row. Here's the Braves lineup. It's not quite the Atlanta lineup you've seen the last few years. Brought to you by Hyundai. Ender Inseriate from Arizona. Diamondbacks leads it off. Then Chase Darno. Yes, he is the brother of the catcher with the Mets. Freddie Freeman, the only leftover really from uh, past years. Then Jeff Francoeur spent some time here in San Diego. Nick Markakis back in right field. Tyler Flowers, former White Sox catcher. Adonis Garcia, third. Kelly Johnson 
He also spent considerable time with Atlanta at second base and Williams Perez on the mound. And on the mound for his fifth start tonight, left hander, 28 year old Christian Friedrich. His scouting report is brought to you by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. So for Christian, he's got fastball command of both sides. He's been working on that, and we have seen progress. A lot of times he's been up in the zone. So strike one is also key. I know we talk about that quite a bit, but he can expand the zone if he gets strike one. And a look at the Padre defense brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers, John Jay in center with Upton and left and Kemp and right. Ramirez anchors the infield at shortstop, Wallace at third, Solarte and Myers on the right side. And the catcher is Derek Norris for the left-hander from Eastern Kentucky University, Christian Friedrich. And we are underway in San Diego. First pitch swinging in Ciarte. Had quite a year last season with the Diamondbacks. He hit 303, was part of the big trade that sent Shelby Miller to Arizona. And he's uh, had trouble buying base hits for his new team hitting 202. In for a strike, 0 and 2. Manager, interim manager is Brian Snitker. He's a lifer in the Braves organization, 40 years employed by the Atlanta Braves. Replaced Freddie Gonzalez in May. Good man right there, Brian Snitker. He has done it all for the Bravos. He is Atlanta Brave through and through. 20 years as a minor league manager in the Brave system and now getting a chance to run the big club. Two strikes from Friedrich is high 90 miles an hour on that fastball. Well the Braves start tonight with 16 wins 40 losses. Minnesota has the identical record the two worst records in big league baseball. It's the worst in the Atlanta franchise Braves franchise outside in 105 years of baseball the Braves franchise has never started this poorly 16 and 40. Yeah I remember the years in the late 70s maybe the Braves were very lean years for the Braves and they had that terrific run. But right now man it's tough very very tough. Late umpires Ted Barrett he's the crew chief with Barksdale Hernandez and Little working the bases. So from two strikes up a full count to Enciarte. That's slicing into souvenir corner. And the count stays full. Not a lot of runs scored for Atlanta recently 13 runs over the last six games that's over five losses. They've been shut out three times those last six games so uh, home plate has not been touched very many times for these Braves offensively an amazingly low home run count 23 yeah. homers 56 games and he walked him after starting with a two strike advantage so leadoff man on and Chase Darno comes up and we take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers Well, on this lovely evening in San Diego one of the keys is get an early lead we talked about the lack of offense hopefully the Padres can get on the board crooked numbers early and then hold the Braves and then secondly how about Barry and the Braves hey, they're struggling right now 16 and 40 that's right 16 and 40 if you get a lead on them you can just take the wind right out of their sails keep your foot on the accelerator and put them down in game one. Braves have lost their last four. They were swept in L.A. coming here to San Diego last night by bus. Well, time to make an adjustment here for Christian Friedrich. Last couple of few pitches have been up in the zone. Darno has had only 70 at bats, 22 hits to account for that 314 average. And there's the base hit to right field. Shoots it sharply between first and second. And Enciarte will be able to roam all the way to third base. And the Braves have something going early against Christian Friedrich. Well, Atlanta just hasn't been able to provide any run production. They're last in the majors in runs scored, in home runs, batting average, only 227 as a team, slugging percentage. And OPS all last. Freddie Freeman is average down from the normal heights for this left handed talented hitter, usually around 280, 290. He's only at 246. The one Brave with some home runs, nine, 
of the 23 total. So first and third no one out here in the top of the first inning for Atlanta. Oh, way inside and eh? home plate is jumping around on the Padre left hander. You know Dick back in the day we didn't have the internet and, you know, we had scouting reports but you crack open the paper to see how hot a guy is Well, you see Freddie Freeman the last 55 games. But the last 13 games only 163 two extra base hits. Keep him cold. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball one and one infield back they'll concede a run for a chance at a double play. Enciarte at third, Garneau at first. And another swing and a miss. Well off the plate. And judging by the last two pitches thrown, he should go right back to that slider to Freddie Freeman down and away. Freeman, the one talented player that apparently is part of the future plans for Atlanta. He's only 26. Swing and a miss. And that's exactly what Friedrich and Norris had in mind. Another breaking ball and one away. Hey, the first pitch was great. The breaking ball. The second pitch, okay, two strikes. Why not go back to it? And perfectly placed, too, because Freeman, a bad hack, way out in front of it. All arms on that one. And now Friedrich with a ground ball could get himself out of trouble with a double play here as Jeff Francoeur, the veteran. Outfielder now hitting cleanup for Atlanta. He's made the full circle, came up at the big leagues with the Braves, and takes in the dirt. It's his 12th season in the big leagues. He was a first round pick of the Braves 14 years ago and spent some time with us here in the Padres back in 2014. We talk a lot about clubhouse. Talent and characters, he's a good one. Oh, yeah. Yes, he, he did. Went. And the plate umpire calling that, Ted Barrett. Since May 1st, with runners in scoring position, not even a 200 average. Hmm. Let's hope that holds up here as we open this series Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with Atlanta. Yeah, that's going to be a tough play. Ramirez gets him, but a run scores. Now Francoeur with his 16th run batted in on the chopper by the mound. That gets Enciardi home. Leadoff walk comes around to score. You look at Marcakis and Freeman in the middle of that batting order. So the last 22 games, Marcakis, the left handed hitter, 207, and Freeman, 200. That just isn't going to get you many wins. Yeah, when your three and five hitters are doing that, big time struggling, you imagine the pressure it puts on the other hitters to try to pick up the slack. Marquez does lead the team with 31 runs batted in, and takes a strike. Pins that one low and on the outside corner. Former Baltimore Oriole, he's now 32. Product of the state of Georgia, a lot of the Atlanta players grew up in Georgia. That's kind of been a pattern through the years. That one chopped to the mound. And Friedrich with a toss to Myers. Lead off walk, a single and a ground out. The Braves have the early 1-0 lead.
Down to left center field. Back to the wall and touch them all. Swing and a miss. Friedrich gets Carter and the bases are left loaded. Swung on and miss. Strike three. What a big strikeout. Wall strikes out at Friedrich. Depressive. And we go to the bottom of the first inning. one nothing Atlanta. And here's the Padre lineup brought to you by Toyota. John Jay, Will Myers, Matt Kemp. The usual three at the top of the order. Jan Solardi hits in the cleanup spot. Melvin Upton against his former teammates. Bats fifth. Then Brett Wallace, a home run yesterday. Derek Norris seventh. Then Alexei Ramirez hitting eighth in front of Friedrich. Jay, a tick under 300 on the season. And a very consistent performer, both in the outfield and at the plate. And the first pitch from Perez at 92. Strike one. There are the numbers on Jay. He leaves the club with 18 doubles. That's among the league leaders. One and one. Perez is 25. We called him portly. I guess he qualifies. Six feet and 240 pounds. I love that. I love that term. Husky. Portly. <laughs> Euphemisms, huh? But Jerry, he's got a thick frame. I love thick frames on pitchers. Yeah. The ham hocks. Yeah, he's uh, top to bottom. He's thick. Fouled out of play. Well, let's look into uh, Williams Perez a little closer. The scout report brought to you by Scripps. He's got a lot of sinkers. He's going to throw the sinker a lot. Sometimes the Control can be a little erratic and a lot of balls in play because he's not a strikeout pitcher. Fewer hits than innings pitched, but not a lot of strikeouts. And the count full to the leadoff man, John Jay. NCRD leading off, walked, and that proved to be a run for Atlanta. That ball drilled into right center field, and that's up the gap. All the way to the 396 sign. Jay on his horse. He's going to round second and hold there. The double is quite fine uh, to lead off an inning. With one out, he would, might have continued on. So, Jay, a ringing double to right center. Well, hopefully, these Padre hitters get to the starter, Perez, early and just add on to that ERA over the four game losing streak. This Braves starters, 8.68 ERA the last four games in that losing streak. And that's a great way to start it off for John Jay. Right out of the box in scoring position to get that run back or more. Will Myers steps up. Myers, the last five games with seven extra base hits, three of them home runs. You know, the one thing I've noticed about Will Myers and his swing, a lot of hitters, and we could talk to Mark Sweeney about this when he comes and joins us in the fourth, but you know, when Will Myers is swinging the bat well, he's staying back on his back leg, his weight is staying back, and his body is not drifting that way towards the pitcher. He's staying down back through there and letting that spin on that back leg and generating that power from the legs, and bam, getting that bat through the zone. And you can follow that as a fan when you see a hitter Leaning, you watch the head. Yeah. You know, when you're really hitting well, your head stays firm and straight, and your eyes follow the ball, and, that, and you don't drift into the pitch. Low. In fact, uh, as part of the physical education major back at Central Michigan, you had to take a gymnastics class. Mm -hmm. Other than a lot of rip skin, I would didn't do much there, but I did <laughs> learn one thing. The, Wherever the head goes, the body's going to follow. You want to be there, and then so that bat comes here, and he stays back and just rips it through the zone. I like the rip it part. There you go. Two and one. And that's in for a strike. Part of the plate. And I even learned a long time ago, you know, when your body starts to drift and your hands drift with you, that's how you jam yourself, and that's how you work underneath the baseball, rather than staying back, letting the ball come to you, and attacking the ball, staying back on that back leg. Matt Kemp on deck, two and two now to Kemp, or to uh, Myers rather. 
And he chops it over the mound. That'll get the runner to third. Play made at first. As the veteran Johnson over to Freeman. And the Padres with an out can tie it up. Well, one thing already, Perez has got tremendous movement on that two seamer. Introducing the Atlanta defense tonight. Jeff Francoeur in left field with Inciardi in center and Mark Hakes playing right field on the infield. Gazar Garcia and Darno on the left side. Johnson and Freeman occupy second and first. And uh, Flowers behind the plate for Perez. So Matt Kemp that's set up for his 40th RBI. Get the ball on the ground. The infield playing back. Well back at all positions. Ball one. Perez pitched against the Padres here last year and Kemp took him deep. Oh the high sinker. And when Matt Kemp is swinging the bat well what do we talk about him wearing out right center field. That's exactly what he did on that sinker from Perez. Padres won that game five to three. That was back in August. Two and oh. First base open. Solarte next. That's a good sign there. Talking about getting ahead early. It's one of my keys to the game. Yeah, the first inning has been a very productive inning. Inside, 3 0. Was that a 2 0 combio from Perez? Looked like something off speed. That indicates to me, Professor, that he doesn't really want to get him much to hit. Camp eager to swing that bat after that long uh, mid afternoon batting practice and he takes a strike at the knees. Padres were five and two against Atlanta last year three and a at Petco and they split a four game series in the Georgia Capitol. High fly ball. That's going to be deep enough as Inciarte gathers himself, makes the squeeze. Here comes Jay, and the game is tied 1 1. The 40th RBI for Matt Kemp. Jan Solarte, the cleanup hitter. With two away bases empty as Kemp gets the runner home. 318 the average for Solarte. That's the best of any Padre. Taking all away. Shift is on. Boy, in center field, Inciarte is kind of playing on the shallow side, wouldn't you say, Dick? He was for Jay as well. Yeah. One and one. You know, maybe because Perez, and there you see uh, Inciarte there in center field, but maybe because of Perez and that sinker, it's tough to elevate. So he wanted to take away maybe that dunker in back of the infielders to come in on that little shallow fly ball. Ground ball pulled to Freeman at first, and he'll flip to the pitcher covering Perez. And the Padres settle for a double and a sack fly, and it's tied at one.
That's kind of the one part that's been fun, is watching these guys get better and grow and, and learn on an every start basis. Um, you see these guys go out and especially some of the guys from that we had last year, the Whistlers and the Williams Perez and, and uh, Fulty, who's not here, um, but see how much they improved from last year to where they are now. And every start is a learning experience for them. And as an older guy, that's kind of what you look at and be like, okay, I can help this guy get better and reach his potential, and that's what you're trying to do. And um, that's been the fun part. Uh, obviously, the wins and the losses haven't been there, but the fun part has been watching these guys develop and become big league pitchers. That's veteran catcher A.J. Przinski for the Braves talking about the bright spot on what has been, as he calls it, a very frustrating start to the season. So I want to ask you, Mark Grant, how tough is it, how challenging is it to be a veteran guy on a team that's rebuilding and has been very vocal about it and has a lot of young guys coming in that you have to sort of teach and get acclimated to the big leagues? Well, Julie, I guess I can echo what A.J. said as far as seeing progress, and that's one of the beauties of being a veteran guy like AJ. Um, I, I can only speak from experience when I was in the big leagues I got hurt rebounded back and started in double A from a shoulder injury and I got to work with kids that were like double A for the first time young guys young kids and, and being a veteran pitcher helping them out so when it paid off Julie was when Later on, maybe a couple years, two, three, four, five years down the road, you see those guys again. They say, hey, thank you so much for the time you took in double yeah. A to help to help out and kind of voice your opinion and kind of nurture us along a little bit. That's the payoff right there. And yeah, I guarantee you, AJ, when he retires from this game and gets in the, the media like he has done already, there's going to be guys thanking him four, five, ten years now. Say, hey, AJ, thanks for that time in the clubhouse. You were really helpful and uh, it paid off. Uh, well said. It's a 2 2 count now on Tyler Flowers catching tonight. Brzezinski will see in the series. You notice one of the names he mentioned was Matt Whistler. Whistler, the former Padre, was part of the trade that was made at the start of last year to get Kimbrell and Upton. And that made uh, big headlines in baseball. Just to refresh your memory, Cameron Maben, Carlos Quinton, Jordan Parabek, a youngster, going uh, along with. Uh, Whistler to uh, Atlanta for Kimbrell and Melvin Upton. Mm. Yeah, pretty good pitch. That doesn't get the call. Another leadoff walk. That burned uh, Friedrich in the first inning as NCRD came around to score. And when you're erratic like Christian was against Flowers there, you're not going to get that borderline pitch. That was a darn good pitch, but he just didn't get the call. Brings up Adonis Garcia. Cuban born 31 year old makes his home in Venezuela. You better have a good physique if you're given the name Adonis. Right. I mean that's pressure. <laughs> you can't be a fat slob like me. And have the name Adonis. <laughs> right. Well you know you just lose a <laughs> few LBs you'll be there. Oh, it's like the Queen Mary losing a suitcase. <laughs> Me losing 100 pounds. Hey, it's part of your charm. You go, you're going for charisma. <laughs> Pretty good set of forearms on Garcia. Yes, he does. High fly ball, shallow in center. Jay coming in, Salarte out, and it's Salarte with the catch for the first out here in the second inning. Kelly Johnson the veteran second baseman is next. Oh another terrible day in San Diego yeah. huh, professor. Yeah. How, I, uh, how do you stand this. It says somebody has to live here. Johnson hitting just 221. 34 year old veterans. He like Francoeur starting with Atlanta and now finishing perhaps his career with the Braves. And strike one. Well, this is an important day in history, not only for the United States, but for the world. June 6th, 1944. 60,000 Allied troops landing in Normandy, and that was the beginning of the end for the Nazi regime. Went around, two strikes to count. And there are some of those great heroes from World War II that. Still enjoying baseball and still a part of life, and we can never bow to your 
greatness enough. Swing and a miss. A weak wave by Johnson. That's the second strikeout for Friedrich. Brings up the pitcher, Williams Perez. Well, just like Freddie Freeman with the breaking ball. Nice breaking ball there. So the reordering of the Braves as they've gotten rid of the veteran players with the big contracts. Jason Hayward with the Cardinals, Justin Upton to San Diego Kimbrell for the Padres last year. And Melvin also coming over. Williams looking for his first hit of the year sends that one into the first row down the right field line. He's 0 for 14 with a bat. But in his career has a couple of hits. And of course it was all Freddie Gonzalez's fault. Oh of course that's why you fire him. You get off to that bad start. Good man. Yes Somebody he is. Has to, you know, Great baseball guy. Yeah he'll, he'll find work. See that's why and this is just one man's opinion. With the state of the Braves are this year, why not? You know, you're going to a new ballpark next year. You sit down with the manager, and, and this could have happened. Who knows? I don't know. You, you sit down with them and you say, "Hey, you know what? We're going to give you the rest of the season. See how it pans out, and then next year, we'll make some changes." Right. Perez gave that one a pretty good ride. Jay collects it, and here come the Padres. Bottom of the second. And it'll be Melvin Upton and Brett Wallace and Derek Norris for the Padres against Williams Perez. Monday night. Always a good night to come out to the ball yard. That's a great spot up there. I know we say it all the time. Great place to watch a ball game. Last five years for Melvin Upton. With the Braves a couple of seasons uh, averaged out around 200 was a huge disappointment. Some of his best baseball for the Padres 259 last year 243 but it, his production and his contribution has been much better than that average would indicate not only the six home runs but playing as solid a left field as anyone in the National League. No question about it. And you know Dick I'll be quite honest with you. The accuracy and the strength of his arm. <laughs> it's pretty darn good. Real good. Yeah runners that are trying to score from second on a base hit to left beware. Swinging at the first pitch and pops it up to the left side. Shortstop Darno takes care of it for the first down. That'll bring up Brett Wallace. Brett hammered a home run to the opposite field in the ninth inning yesterday. Uh, too little, too late as the Padres lost the final game of the Rocky Series 10 to 3. But Wallace showing how strong he is going the opposite way. His fourth home run of the year. Shift on.
Fastball strike, and here's Wallace taking that outside pitch and going with it. Tell you what, opening up a new avenue when a hitter like Brett Wallace, we saw it earlier in the year, hitting a home run that way. Well, it opens so many opportunities as far as the way you go about hitting certain pitches the opposite way. Yeah, he has uh, three home runs going the opposite field this year. Miggy Cabrera in Detroit, he can check a swing and hit it mm -hmm. out to right field. Been there on this day in 1986 at Jack Murphy Stadium, maybe not, but you'll recall that was an interesting start to a ball game. The manager was Steve Boros at the time. Remember Steve? I do. And he was really unhappy about a call made the night before, so he came up to home plate, and Charlie Williams, the umpire, and gave him a videotape. Said, right. well, "I want you to look at it. You were <laughs> you were wrong." Needless to say, Boros uh, didn't see the first pitch of the game. He was sent to the cooler. I remember hearing about that. <laughs> Made his point. Ejected even before the game started. Two and two now to Wallace. And a late swing there. Picked that one right out of the catcher's glove. I wonder if Boris approached Charlie Williams at the time and says, you know, one of these days we're going to have a challenge system and they're going to prove <laughs> that you were wrong. Yeah, that's a man with foresight, huh? It's like the guy that came into the bar in 1928 and waited for TV to come on. Now that's foresight. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was re really late on that last pitch. He was right down the middle. Pitch number six, Fox Tracks, brought to you by Honda. Right there. Perez has been wild in the strike zone so far. And a full count. Wallace is very selective. Patient hitter. He's walked 24 times. He hasn't started every game, and he, by far and away, has walked more than any Padre. There's a souvenir that makes it uh, deep into the seats down the left field side. A hey, nice catch. There you go. Yeah, show it off. Want it. Come on. There you go. You're on the big screen. Now give it to a kid. Looks like a young Peter Seidler making that play. <laughs> Ground ball into the shift. Bobbled, however, by Johnson and safe as Wallace. That'll be an error. Position. Positioned out there in shallow right field, so he had plenty of time to get to the ball and in and out of the glove. Padres a man on with one out. As a pitcher, you make this pitch, you kind of get in his kitchen a little bit, and then you look out there, okay, the shift is on, you're thinking, oh, nice, we got an out. And, well, maybe not. Very makeable play for Kelly Johnson. Rattles around the glove, drops for an E4. Derek Norris then steps up. Average and even 200. First pitch strike. Braves have made a player move today, and it involves a former Padre. Right hander Casey Kelly has been called from Triple A Gwinnett. Another pitch in the zone. 0 and 2. Boy, how sweet is it for the Braves to have their Triple A affiliate about what 45 minutes away from yeah. Atlanta, and it's going to be even closer once their new ballpark opens up up in Cobb County, Gwinnett North of Atlanta. And that's why the Padres were trying to get a stadium built in Escondido, where mm -hmm. you could just drive uh, in an hour or so to come to the ball yard here at Petco. Hey, there's plenty of room out in Alpine. We can build a ballpark out there. Have the Alpine Mountaineers. The well, Alpine Coyotes. Rac raccoons. There you go. You got any raccoons well, we out there? We got it all out there. It's a regular Mutual of Omaha show. 
Wild Kingdom. And that's even when you're not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drive to left. May have the distance, but not quite as the heavy air holds it up and Francoeur makes the catch. Off the bat, looked as if that had a chance. Boy, he hits the ball hard for outs, and that continues. And you know, with the two seamer Perez, he may have gotten in on him a little bit. Not getting that sweet spot. So take a look. Here's the two seamer. Where's it on the bat? Yeah, got down by the label a little bit too much. Good swing, though, Derek Norris. So with two outs, Alexei Ramirez, the hitter. He's in an eight game hitting streak, raising his average to 256. And in those eight games, batting at a 367 pace. And all three of his home runs. Skipping right over the dugout of the Braves and into the box seats. Man brought his glove, pays off. Okay, we see it. You can sit down now. Oh, now the robot. Oh. That plays big in Paris. Low two and one with the pitcher Friedrich on deck. Sinkers down and in, breaking balls away. Wallace a safe lead at first. And the ground ball, two hops to third baseman Garcia, cross the diamond for the out. And the error by Johnson not costly to the Braves. It stays at one. The 71 All-Star Game at Tiger Stadium, Detroit. Third inning, Hank Aaron launches a two-out solo home run, his first career All-Star home run. A bite of blue to give the National League a 3-0 lead, but the American League would rally for a 6-4 win. Mid-July closing in. We're only about five weeks yep. away. And you can see that All-Star Game right here at Petco Park on Fox. You bet. It'll be baseball mecca for a week. Home run derby on Monday. There's the uh, the minor league all star game on uh, mm -hmm. on Sunday. All the other attendant activities. Fan friendly. NCRT walked 
leading off the ball game came around to score went to third on the single by Darno and scored on Francoeur's ground out. Slaps that one off the facing of the second deck. Yeah, there's a gentleman he's got a full load of food there and a one hands the souvenir that's talent. Didn't even get any cheese on the ball. Mm -hmm. You know that's not allowed. <laughs> Putting cheese that's on the ball. That's an illegal pitch. Yeah. You tried it. I bet you tried it. Never tried the cheese. That implies that you did try other. I plead the fifth, Your Honor. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> you put something from a fifth on the ball. <laughs> does that work? <laughs> Makes the ball dizzy, does it? <laughs> two and two now to NCRT with. Darno and Freeman to follow in the top of the third. Oh, a selfie. Oh, really? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I'm having a beer at the ballpark. It's an all star beer. Full count. And that's in there. Strike three. Third punch out for Christian Friedrich. And CRD caught looking. Good breaky ball. It seems that Friedrich has that feel. He got Freeman on it. Kelly Johnson. And CRT. That one was called too. Ted Barrett ringing him up on the call. Good pitch. Darno singled sharply to right field. That set up the run in the first inning. And the breaking ball to him drops in there. Darno grew up in the area, high school at Los Alamitos, up near LA, lives in Long Beach. Tough play, backing up as well as now the long throw. And not nearly in time. Once he backed up on it, there was no chance. And of course, unfamiliar with the position, a little riskier charging and having to deal with that short hop. Infield yeah. hit. You're exactly right, Dick. Once the momentum started going back there, back on his heels. And you know what? In a play like that, don't try to throw it on the line. You use the ground. So Darno, two for two, the only hits for Atlanta. And here's Freddie Freeman struck out swinging the first time. Even with a man on, the shift is employed. A line oh. drive to left and foul. And uh, that shatters and goes all the way to the oh. hitter's circle. Fortunately, Freeman was not in that batting circle where all the pine tar and weighted bats are. This almost hits Christian, right? Up the middle. Man. Pin wheeling at uh, Javelin. Mm. Center field and hit well. Jay retreats and makes the play at the edge of the track. Returning to first, Darno. That ball fading away from Jay and dying. It's a heavy air tonight. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to Ed Premium. What are you laughing about? I don't know. The number one app for live baseball, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Boy, you really sold that one. Uh, that, that ball just had some funky action to it. It was just so deep, but yet I don't know whether it was knuckling because John Jay went back anticipating the long fly ball, but then had to retreat a little bit. Nice play. So two away, and Francoeur grounded to short his first time, a weak grounder that got the run in for his 17th RBI. The thing about Frank Coeur, and, and this was since day one as a big leaguer back when he was a rookie with the Braves, you don't have to throw him a strike. 
Had a nice career, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One of, my, one of my biggest uh, favorite players right here, Jeff Frank Corp. 155 career homers. Swing and a miss. Strike three. A couple of more strikeouts for Friedrich. We go to the bottom of the third inning at Petco. Friedrich will be leading off for San Diego. So I, I know I, I told those guys I kind of I do things the way I do them because that's how I do them. And um, I've had a lot of I've, I've had unbelievable support from the coaching staff, um, the players, uh, the, the front office, the clubhouse kids have been very welcoming to me. And I lean on our coaches a lot because they they are the ones that really have developed the relationships to date with the players. So I lean on them as, as I kind of develop the relationships on my own with the players so um, it's just uh, again something that's going to take a while and, and um, just take it a day at a time. That's Braves interim manager Brian Snicker on his approach to the veterans and the new guys on the team and I asked him if he got any advice when he got the position and he said he turned to his buddy Pete McCannon who's now the manager of the Phillies he said it happened to him three separate times of course the third time it stuck with the Phillies his best advice take it one day at a time be patient he said we're a competitive bunch by nature but of course you want to win but you just have to take it slow. All right. Thank you, Julie. And of course, uh, Brian Snitker with his 40 years in the Braves organization, he's seen all levels of play and worked with a lot of different players. Man of 60 years of age getting his chance. Friedrich looks at a ball away two and two to the Padre pitcher and then it'll be John Jay and Will Myers for San Diego here in the third. 119 career, but he's two for nine so far as a Padre hitter. And down he goes, and that's the first strikeout for Perez. Do it. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form, but the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. And on this Monday night. A 1 1 tie. The Padres bring up John Jay. He doubled to right center field, scored the Padre run. Came home on the sack fly from Matt Kemp. And he grounds this one just foul past first, flirting with another extra base hit. 19 doubles to lead the National League. John Jay, Marte, Parra, Polanco, and Carpenter get on the list. Well, I wonder who took John Jay tonight and picked the stick. Well, I hope I did. I'm due. I'm due to actually just to get any points. I mean, just any points. To not get zero and not get a minus, you know? You know what? I've got a, uh, a bone to pick with. Is our commissioner Max Michelak? No, the commissioner's up in Duluth, Minnesota. Oh. Bernie Mazzola. Well, anyway, I, I got word from one of the coaches. Yeah. 
who keeps a very keen eye on pick the stick. This particular coach wants to eliminate the strikeout being negative one. An out's an out, he says. A strikeout should not be a negative. An out is an out, he said. Well, I can see his point, but I, you've got to have negative somewhere. And, I, you know, I think that the average fan would say, if you struck out every time you're at bat, that'd be a big negative. Hey, let's let's throw it out there. Let's see what the fans think. Get on Twitter. You know how to get a hold of me. Should a strikeout be a negative one or just an out? We finally cleaned up that one uh, situation where on a sacrifice fly they were giving two points for an out. It's only one now. Correct. Were you the leader of that? Well, yeah, I had to put in a long distance call. Bring up Bernie and, and Duluth. You know, it's tough to get him because they hibernate there sometimes. Hey, big June for Will Myers, huh, Dick? Going the opposite way with some pop. We're finding that swing, wearing out both gaps. The big boy getting extended. And home runs to each of the last two games for Myers. Sky Rockets in flight. The last 15 games, he's hitting 350. Hmm, that's a pretty good pitch. Two and one. Two out, bases empty here in the bottom of the third. Game time tomorrow, 7 10. We'll be on the air at 6 30 for Fox Sports San Diego. Andres Live, the pregame show, 6 30. Way out in front of the changeup. That's it, when the body drifts. See that? And, and it's easier said than done because the changeup is a very, very tough pitch to adapt to, especially when you see a lot of two seamers at 91. Tomorrow night it'll be Colin Ray for the Padres against Aaron Blair. The youngster is 0-4, but he's pitched better than that. No support. Low and away. And a full count to Myers. Padres will complete the home stand with these three with Atlanta. Then we'll go on the weekend to Colorado for three and then back home. Next week it'll be Miami for three and the Washington Nationals for four at Petco. Oh, if that stays fair, that's a base hit. Infield hit for Myers. A swinging bunt. Can't lay him down any better than that. That's when you're going rather well. And that's what happens when you have a two seamer, a sinker type pitcher out on that hill. Garcia playing back. He tops that sinker. That's a big league knock. Well, that infield is true, isn't it? That yes, it is. Stayed on a straight line off the front of the plate. Myers, a threat to steal. He's got a half dozen. That's a pretty good hunk of pizza. Kemp, the sack fly, center field in the first inning, his 40th run batted in. Among the leaders in the National League. To the right side and through. Myers will check at second. Two on, two outs for Jan Salarte. You know what that was right there, Professor? That was Purdy. Purdy. <laughs> that was a Purdy swing right there by Matt Kemp. Up and away, two seamer. No need to try to pull that ball, especially holding on the runner. And Matt gets that front foot down and watches swing. Taking it that way. Hands first, barrel to follow. Myers, secondary lead. With that big gaping hole, he is in the second base easily. Sharply struck by Kemp. Mm -hmm. Third hit for the Padres. Solarte out on a ground ball to the first baseman in the first inning. Another pitch right in the middle of the plate for a strike one. First time through against Perez, he's in command, but at the second time, and opposing hitters taking advantage. Let's see if the Padres can do that. That ball hit well to right field. Deep back. Solarte. Touch them all. Mm -hmm. 
A three run shot by Salarte. His fourth of the year. The Padres take a four to one lead. Breaking ball speeds up the bat of Salarte. And check out the trajectory of the ball off the bat. At first, it's hit so high, you're thinking, no, it's not going to go that far. That ball was hit high. It was hit far. Cuidado! Piece of Mojado! So with two outs, the infield hit by Myers. Then Kemp single to right field, and Salarte goes deep against Williams Perez and a 4 to 1 advantage for the San Diego Padres. Upton lines it on one hop into the shift and Johnson able to throw across for the out. Tough luck hitting for Upton. He hit that on the nose but the big blow is from Jan Salarte. Number four on the season for the Padre infielder. Hammers one into the right field seats, a three run shot, and the Padres take a four to one lead to move on to the fourth inning here at Petco Park. And there is Solarte's home run ball. Oh, a little Vino would be Kino, <laughs> along with a home run ball. Nicely done. Yeah, Solarte, a fine vintage himself. Nice. Nick Marcakis, Tyler Flowers, and Adonis Garcia in the fourth inning and Christian Friedrich working with the lead. Marcakis tapped out to the mound his first time. Uses the full field. The Padres do not employ the shift. One and one. Mark Sweeney joins us here in our Fox Sports San Diego booth. Greetings. How you doing hey. gentlemen? Good. How are you? That was a nice shot by Salarte. You gotta love those. Yeah, the ball, a couple of balls hit tonight seem to be dying in the heavy air, but that one flew out of here. Yeah, that was a really good swing. Elevated pitch. Always like to see that from Salarte. Had some good energy before the game today. Hit the left field, and that's Upton drifting back to the edge of the track and has to make a stab at it at the last minute. That ball carried well. Mark, this is something that Dick and I were talking about earlier, but taking the wind out of the sails of the Braves and with this home run, with the way they've been going, I'll tell you what, I know there's a lot of baseball left, but to put that three spot along with the one in the first. Well, you know, Mark, I mean, when you have a team that only has 16 wins to this point, you have those moments in a game and you get behind early. It's here we go again. And you have to battle those all the time. Yeah. They measured the home run at 389 feet. It was over the home run deck. Padres have uh, had the home run swing going. 
National League leaders at 21 since uh, May 24th. Washington leading the way. They have 21 since May 24th. The Braves have only 23 all season. Flowers walked his first time. One and one now. Well, on this day, June 6th, uh, not only D Day, but uh, for the Padres, an important date for Trevor Hoffman. In 2007, on this date, he became the first major league relief pitcher to save 500 games. Uh, 51. Mm. The path to the Hall of Fame. I think it's going to happen this year, don't you think? Absolutely. Well, not this year, but they've already voted. But you talk yeah, about the following, 2017. The next year. Yeah, I, I hope you're right. And what a great picture that was in the UT this morning of Quinn and Wyatt, Wyatt. hugging each other yeah. after their team, Cathedral, won the CIF in their division. What a great picture that was. Yeah, that's a tremendous. Brothers hugging, one a senior yeah. going on to Harvard and the other a junior. This one hit the right field. Nice piece of hitting by Flowers. Just went with the pitch. Punches it to right. That's the third Atlanta hit tonight. And he's been on base both times. A walk and a hit. And of course, everyone not familiar with the periodicals here in the great city of San Diego, the Union Tribune is the fish wrap here in our fine city. That's that's not a nice thing to say. Yeah, I know fish wrap. Is that what you do? You can't wait after for your paper you read to it. come? Yeah, after you read oh. it, and then you, yeah. Are you what, guys what fighting? Se what section? That's not a negative way. No, you, 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 that's it's like recycling. You make it useful. He sound defensive. Line drive pass Ramirez as Garcia has a hit. Back to back singles here against Friedrich with one out in the fourth. And that'll bring up Kelly Johnson. Boy, Atlanta, that's just hard to fathom that only 23 home runs hit in 56 games. Now you think about that gap in between them and Miami. That is really tough for your offense. But Johnson represents the tying run as he steps in through his career more than his share of home runs, but only one this season. Pounds that foul. He struck out the first time swinging. He's had success against Friedrich. He's two for four. Yes, he did. Mark Sweeney, it seems like Christian Friedrich has really got the feel for that breaking ball. He does. And he, he's giving that illusion of the strike and getting out of the strike zone very well tonight. He got Johnson earlier swinging at a breaking ball out of the zone. Going to him, might as well go back out there again, sure. huh? Or waste a fastball outside. I think you go to the breaking ball immediately. And he does. And it's way off the plate. One and two. Singles by Flowers and Garcia. They're at second and first with one out here in the fourth. High, high. Back a third. Ramirez lets Wallace make the play in foul territory. Two away, and the pitcher Perez steps up. So he gave it a pretty good go. His uh, initial at bat sent Jay back fairly deep center field. With runners in scoring position and two outs, go for 10, the opposition. Friedrich bearing down. That's locking it down. Mm -hmm. Obviously, getting the big strikeouts, but executing pitches when you need be. Perez 0 for 15 hitting this year. There's a strike. I'll be surprised if he throws another fastball here. Just go with the breaking ball. Better be in a good spot though, not for a strike. You don't want to speed up his bat and have him 
deposit something down that left field line. Bounces the breaking ball one and one. You know what bugs me? Every ball in the dirt they transfer out. They switch out. What happens to the ball that squares up on the barrel of the bat, a one hopper to shortstop over to first? That ball stays in play. That's I think it's a waste of baseballs and a waste of leather. <laughs> I think you should write a letter. I think I should talk to him. So if you were a commissioner, what would you do? Baseball stays in the game. Unless it's a foul ball, it stays in the game. You know those move, right? You've been a pitcher before. Exactly. You, I know how to do that. Yeah. Remember back in high school? I don't know about you. Three we baseballs. Two. We had two. Did you really? <laughs> two. In the 50s. You had yeah. two balls. By the time you got to the sixth, seventh <laughs> inning, I mean, you couldn't even see the stitches. Yeah. It was so beat up, beaten up and dirty. One and two. Ooh. Pretty good pitch. Not good enough to get the strike call from Barrett. And it's two and two. Two on, two out, two and two the count. Ground ball sharply to deep short. Ramirez goes the short way just in time. That was close. Hustling hard was Garcia. They get the out, and the Braves strand two, middle of the fourth at Petco. The Padres four, the Braves one. A uh, swinging chopper to short scores the first run and Ciarte had walked. Kemp knocks in a tying run after Jay had doubled to make it one all after one and then the big three run home run from Jan Hervé Salarte. Number four for Salarte. Three runs on one swing and the Padres lead four to one our Harris game summary. Bottom of the fourth, it'll be Wallace, Norris, and Ramirez for the Padres. Brett safe on the air by Johnson, the second baseman, his first trip. Pulled the string on that pitch, 74 miles an hour. It's like a young Khalil Green right there. <laughs> oh, good call, Mark yeah. Sweeney. Uh, ball in the strike. Man, Khalil could play short, right? He was fun to watch, wasn't he? So good, athletic, oh. a lot of power. He was the people's choice here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. 
to left field. And in comes Fran Coor for the first down. I tell you what, it's a story that always reminds me of, of how good Khalil Green was. He had a play in the hole and he slid to his backhand and didn't come up with it. It was meaningless. They didn't score. After the game, we end up winning. After the game, I go in the weight room and he's in the mirror in full uniform, but he took his shoes off and he's sliding on the mat to his backhand. I said, what are you doing? He said, I missed that play in the third inning. I want to get my footwork right. Wow. And it was just the finer details of what really comes into your craft and what he put into it. Very quiet person. But that's the detail that he wanted and he wanted to be a star shortstop and man he had a lot of talent. You know, going through some rough times social depression and I certainly hope he's battling through that. Boy, I remember that one night there was the throwback night they were in the 84 uniforms and he put on a clinic mm -hmm. at shortstop going to his left over second base going to his right into the 5.5 hole. It was an incredible night of defense for Khalil Green. Two strikes now on Norris. He lined out to left his first time. Perez bounces one. That has become the automatic pitch in baseball. You had two strikes. Almost can bet on it being a breaking ball low and away in the dirt. That had a good sound. That's the big part of the yard. And Norris is taken care of by Enciarte. We were talking about the steal the other day, and of course Melvin Upton with that spectacular steal. But how about Mark Sweeney? Uh-oh. He's on third. No, he's heading for home. Hey, is this HD? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the slide. Look at the athleticism. Hey, you can barely notice. Hey, oh. thanks, for, oh. thanks for the help, Jeff Blum. You see him? He, he didn't leave, off. You, he he didn't leave you a lane, the catcher. No, we didn't have replay. Sorry about it. Just a stat. You came in barreling in there. That catcher was ready to run for cover. Speed kills, doesn't it? Oh, man. You look like a fullback, huh? It's embarrassing. That was a freight train coming down the tracks. Thanks. Seriously. How about taking up? Was that Brad Osmus in Houston? Should have knocked the manager out of him. <laughs> Just kidding. I love Brad Osmus. Was that the only time that uh, you were part of a double steal? Um, I was probably on the back end of a lot of them. Not a lot, but enough. Mm -hmm. Now, was that on your own, or did is it was it a plan? Rob Picciolo was our third base coach, and he said, "Listen, if they throw it through." Look to take that. So okay. just is most of those times it's reactionary. And it must have been this. I didn't remember the situation, but that's a time that we probably had to. We could take a chance. Brad Osmus with a good throwing arm, quick release. I wish I did something like Melvin, but I don't have the speed to do that. That ball is sailing over the head of Johnson. A soft single to right center for Ramirez. And that'll get the pitcher out of the way as Friedrich comes up with two outs. Five hits now for the Padres. The big one, the three run homer, Salarte. A well, big key for the Padres this inning is to turn over that lineup. Sure, there's two outs, but a high pitch from Perez. Try to add on to that four. Four to one lead. As I mentioned, one of our keys get to the Braves early and continue to keep that foot on the accelerator. Reader struck out the first time and takes strike one. Well, you saw Mark Sweeney barrel in on the double steal. Here's Melvin Upton, daring and acrobatic. There he is, there he isn't. Well, there's two common themes to both of those steals of home. We slid on the inside part. <laughs> yeah. He probably has studied video of you. Where was that? Black Not and that white? video. It Black wasn't and HD. <laughs> Man, we all would love to have the speed of Melvin Upton Jr. And that was a great moment. Two strikes now to Friedrich. And he takes all the way strike three. That's it for the Padres in the fourth inning. After four, a four to one lead by the home team.
Hey, brought to you by Rams Truck. And let's take a look at the first baseman, Freddie Freeman. A wide stance, which sets him up for a short stride, which is the elements to simplify things. But he stays behind the baseball so well. You can see the eyes, the vision down the barrel, short to the baseball, but also possessing the opposite field power. When he is on point, that left center gap is definitely open, and he has hits for a lot of power. We're seeing this year he is struggling with runners in scoring position because that approach hasn't been consistent enough. Had some injuries last year. This year it's been a struggle mentally for Freddie Freeman. He'll hit third here in the top of the fifth inning behind NCRT and Darno. And the pitch in for a strike. NCRT has walked and scored. Moved to third on Darno's single and scored on the sacrifice fly or sacrifice ground ball by uh, Jeff Rancourt. Padre scored a run in the first inning on the sack fly by Kemp. And Ciardi, a 3 0 3 hitter last year with the D backs, but just 2 0 2 this season so far with Atlanta. He's been on the shelf for a good amount of the time. Lashes that one foul way back into the lower tier. Well, this is a name in Ciarte that a lot of teams have looked to acquire because of his talent. See last season pretty good numbers. But this year going through that early injury it really set him back. Talking to the Atlanta Braves people they say that he just hasn't got started hasn't felt very comfortable with his swing might have something to do with his leg injury. The Braves got NCRT and the real prize in the deal was Dansby Swanson, the top draft pick for Arizona, an infielder. Yeah, he could be the shortstop of the future in a few yeah. years, huh? We talked about him in our pregame show. One and two. Ground ball to third, two hops to Wallace. Fires across in time. A reminder our game is always presented in brilliant HD by Sony. Kid a bit about your playing days and whether there was HD television, you can tell immediately uh, the many changes through the course of all of our lives. But I, I imagine you probably weren't part of the generation that applauded. The coming of the drive-in movie theater. Oh, huh? yeah. Were there drive-in movie theaters? Drive huh? yeah. As a kid, yeah. We did drive-ins. With a girlfriend? Open. No, actually my first drive-in experience was my mom and dad and, the, and my two sisters. We went to go see Herbie the Love Bug. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Dean Jones. You would remember that. I, d but I we, remember that too, we yes. went, we, You know, we hook up the speakers. You open your window a little bit. You put the speakers yeah. in your car. Well, we had the station wagon where you uh, the family it, truckster. Yeah, the family truckster. You lately roll down the window, but had the seat in the back. <laughs> Foul. And they back. tried to keep that as long as possible yeah. so that I could drive that in high school, oh. pull in and be embarrassed. Yeah. Hi guys. <laughs> well done. Yep, I got the station wagon, <laughs> the family truckster. And then you'd go and get the good. You could eat uh, in the car. You know, if you had a little young lady fairy, you could kind of mm -hmm. put hey your now. around her now. You know. Yeah, those were the good old days. Well, it all began on this date, 1933, first one. Ground ball. I would have thought it was in would be in Southern California, the drive-in theater, the first one. But it was in Camden, New Jersey, wow. of all places. Huh. Do you remember your favorite drive-in movie? Uh, Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> well, really? Yeah. I mean. You, you know, the, the women were so afraid, sure. you know, they just kind of cuddle up to you, you know. So they wanted well, to hug you. That's great thinking, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> More than you needed to know. It wasn't that close, but uh, there are no stepping into the pitch. Counts two and two. Single to right and uh, infield uh, hit the last time up. Deep third. Line foul. Coming in hot. And appropriately, a Braves fan should get the, the ball off the bat of Darno. Okay, so uh, when you don't have any small D's, what do you do? You get a capital P and you turn it upside down for Darno. Yeah, very nice. 
just saying. Swing and a miss in the dirt. And Norris will have to throw to first for the out. Five strikeouts now for Friedrich. And here's Freddie Freeman. Mark, you were talking about his swing. Kind of in a funk right now. And when he's going well, swinging the bat well, you see 2015. But what a difference from this year. And last year, you see those numbers, and they don't pop out at you because he did go through some injuries. Didn't have consistent at bats, which does factor into it. The what? numbers that really are startling. He has nine home runs and 16 runs batted in yeah. with nine home runs. He just hasn't been able to deliver much. So maybe there haven't been that many base runners for him to de deliver. Well, also a lot of it has to do with protection and who hits behind him, who hits in front of him, setting up certain RBI situations. A little better when Chipper Jones was in the lineup. Exactly. Or Brad Cummins. Remember him? <laughs> he was like he was supposed to be like the next Dale Murphy. Big what? power right handed hitter back in the early 80s. Oh yeah he was like the second coming of Dale Murphy. It didn't happen. A lot of it. swings and misses. A ball two strikes to Freeman. Flight out to deep center is uh, last time. From Fountain Valley. Top draft pick of the Braves. He's still just 26, as we mentioned. He led the uh, major leagues hitting with runners in scoring position last year. This year, hardly an RBI to show for his work. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout. Friedrich has a half dozen. We're at the halfway mark in this one. Four and a half in the books at Betco. And the Padres enjoying a four to one lead behind Christian Friedrich. Nothing like enjoying the home run trot, and it's Jan Salarte with the dance tonight, a three-run shot. The difference in the game behind Christian Friedrich, who's allowed just four hits and struck out six. And we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, and John Jay slices one to left. Fran Coor tracks it down. One away. Well, how about the El Paso Chihuahuas? They've won 12 of their last 14. They're leading their division of the Pacific Coast League. And they have last night seven of the nine starters, and that includes the pitch, seven hitting over 300. Wow. Seven of them. Andrew Rod Barajas has done a phenomenal job with that group. 
And That's Alex Dickerson leading the way. He's hitting 424 with nine homers and 40 you know, you, runs batted. And him. you said it a lot the other night. That's a tough level to manage. It, is. it really is. You're managing different personalities. You're getting excited about sending Kevin Quackenbush back up to the big leagues, but then you have somebody else coming down. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult spot. Yeah, their team batting average is 316. They got some. Uh, well, Morgan Burkhart talent. is the hitting coach there. He is locking those guys in. Two of the players acquired in the trade for Craig Kimbrell. Carlos Asuaje hitting 330. Manny Margo hitting 305. Nick Noonan, the former Giant. Fine infield hitting 353. Casey McElroy, another infielder, 314. Brian Schimpf, we saw him in the preseason, 333 with a dozen home runs. And uh, Hunter Renfro at 318 with 12 home runs as well. So that El Paso group uh, pounding out a lot of wins, 12 and 2 in the last 14. And Mark, you did that preseason game from El Paso. Nice yard they got there. Really nice yard. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the press box area. It's a, it has a big league feel. Because mm -hmm. I played in the old one. Did you play in the old yeah. El Paso? The Dudley Dome. And what a great adjustment they made oh. going from that place to the new facility. Perez thought he had. Meyer struck out. Didn't get the call. Full count. You know, we went into the locker room and, and the facilities that they have. First of all, they have all kinds of uniforms to wear. Much like the big leaguers do. And uh, it's just a, a really nice clubhouse atmosphere, good hitting cages, and it has definitely changed. Ground ball weekly, but it's trickling through the right side. That's a base hit. <laughs> Kelly Johnson going to make the soccer play on that one. He had no chance to throw out Myers. <laughs> I think that's a first. A foot mashy. I don't think I've ever seen this. Go, going to his left, and yeah. Keep it, keep it right there. Well, Have the you hacking sack. The only time I've seen an outfielder do that, that's an infielder. Remember Paul O'Neill? Yeah, he kicked it into he the infield. He kicked it back into the infield because yeah. he couldn't come up with the handle. And he kept him yeah. from advancing. That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> called a hit that had perfect direction. Just a slow roller, but there was no one over there until Johnson chased it down on the outfield grass. Should have done the bicycle kick. There you go. So one out and Myers at first for Matt Kemp. Kemp a sacrifice fly in the first and a single score to run in the third came around on Solarte's home run. Boy if Matt Kemp can get a high sinker out of the hand of Perez here we have seen before what could be done. We saw the home run the opposite way on a pitch away a two seam sinker. Boy middle in we've seen him deposit in left field stands. Fouled at the plate. Well, Colin Ray goes against Aaron Blair. We'll be on the air at 6:30 tomorrow night. Fox Sports San Diego. Padres live the pregame show. It's a noon start on TV Wednesday. 12:40 game. Pomerantz against Tehran. Myers coaxing another throw. And he's got his lead measure just about right. Well, not a bad time to run with this three run lead. He'd be a little more aggressive, especially with one out. And another follow at the plate on the changeup. Two strikes on Kemp. Inside. Well, one and two. Myers bluffing as if he was going to steal the last two pitches. Can be a little distracting for the hitter.
In the dirt, Myers doesn't have to steal. He gets second, he rounds second, and he's going to hold. <laughs> he's like a cold out of the corral. You get him on the bases, and he wants to keep running. Looks like a changeup, and Flowers was anticipating that one in, and it over the left handed batter's box, and there's the aggressive turn for Wilmot. He doesn't even break stride. A chance for Kemp to pick up another run, four to one. Padres lead. <laughs> Left field, Francoeur can't get it. Myers will score easily. Kemp with a double. It's five to one. Another RBI for Matt Kemp, his 41st of the year. 2-2 two -two hanging breaking ball, and Matt's a little bit quick out in front of it, but still gives it a good ride. And it's just a little bit out in front of him a little. And Jeff Francoeur, you know, he's not going to win any gold gloves out there this late in his career. You know, in the earlier days, he probably catches that ball, but hey, that's a huge run for San Diego, making it 5-1. And something's wrong with Williams Perez as the trainer comes out for Atlanta to see about the right hander. The trainer Jeff Porter has been with the Braves many, many years. Perez reaching to the trainer's elbow as if to say wow. that's where it hurts for me. Let's see this pitch if we can tell. Action there as yet. He doesn't go to reach reach for the elbow as if the, something's wrong. But the uh, interim manager Brian Snitker is pointed toward the bullpen, and it appears they're going to have an emergency reliever here. That's it for Williams Perez. And let's hope it's not serious. He leaves the game trailing five to one, and sure enough, there's Casey Kelly just called up from. Triple A ball, the former Padre. We're going to see him in action. Back at his old home. We'll be right back. Padres 5, Atlanta 1. If you're a baseball fan, then you need the all-new Fox Sports app. Get highlights, interviews, injury updates, scores, and instant alerts on your favorite teams and rivals. Download now on the iOS App Store, Google Play, or visit foxsports.com slash app. Yeah, share the wealth there. Big gold helmet full of Wow. Ice cream or frozen yogurt, whatever. That looks so good. Well, our pitching change is brought to you by El Cajon Ford. And Kelly back in the majors for the third time this year. He's been up and down with Gwinnett, the AAA club with the Braves. 
And uh, interesting background. Kelly was the number one draft pick of the Red Sox back in 2008. Uh, 30th pick overall. And remember he came to the Padres in the deal that sent Adrian Gonzalez to the Red Sox. Along with Raymond Fuentes and another fellow named Anthony Rizzo was in that trade. And then Rizzo traded to the White, uh, to the Cubs for uh, for uh, Andrew Kashner. So Casey will be allowed as much time as needed. He looks like he's ready to go, but you know he's throwing the fastball, the curveball, the change. He's only throwing about 87 to 92, so he's got to rely on location, the two seamer, the four seamer. He's got the hook. Missed all of 2013 with Tommy John surgery. And the Padres acquired him in the offseason in the deal that brought Christian Bethencourt here to San Diego. Well, Kelly's connections via the trade route, very uh, pronounced here in San Diego, is Salarte, the three run homer the last time. And he steps up with Matt Kemp at second base, a run home, and one out here in the fifth. Kelly throws to second base to see whether or not maybe it was Myers. They thought he did not uh, touch second. But he was already at second. He was already there. What was that all? A wild pitch. He was trying to get an extra warm up. <laughs> maybe. That is really strange. Ooh, line drive back to the box, knocked down by Kelly, and that'll be an infield hit for Salarte. Over to third, Matt Kemp. Hockey suit coming right back at you off the glove of Casey Kelly. And he took that two seamer right back up the box. Yeah, that was actually way to be greeted. Huh? That was off the end of the bat by Salarte. So I think Kelly was actually surprised. It looked faster than it really was. Salarte continues his hot streak. Home run and an infield hit. So first and third with one out. Melvin Upton has popped up and sent a hard ground ball to the second baseman Johnson for an out the last time. Well, Melvin loves the first pitch. Look for that elevated, and he likes that right center approach in RBI situations. Takes inside. Kelly, a terrific high school athlete in Florida, was an outstanding high school quarterback. In fact, was recruited by the University of Tennessee. Be their quarterback of the future, but signed a big contract baseball with Boston. Yeah, he went around one and one. It's a good curveball right there. Good tight curveball. Great rotation. Very rarely throws the changeup. So pretty much a two pitch pitcher. Fastball curveball. Kelly now 26 years of age. With the Padres, he had a two and five record. Uh, just a bit high, says plate umpire Barrett. Big gap in right center for Upton. Broken back roller to short. No play at home. They get the force at second. The run scores Kemp. And that's another run for the Padres here in the inning. It's six to one. Not hit hard enough to turn the double play. Upton gets the RBI. His 24th. He's safe on the fielder's choice. That brings up Brett Wallace. Safe on an error, and he flied to left last time. So the Braves scored first in the first inning. Padres tied it in the bottom of the first. The three run homer by Solarte in the third. They racked up a couple of more runs here in the fifth inning. That run 
charge to the starter Perez. Freeman goes the second weight base path to get the final out. And we go to the sixth inning with the Padres enjoying a five run lead. Padres Baseball brought to you by Saquon Casino. Sign up for the new Padres club card today. By Jack in the Box. Taste the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack before it's gone. And by Mercury Insurance. We're on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today. All smiles down in the Padre first base dugout as Jan Salarte brings out the White smiles with his three run homer. Hey, that's right near your set, Mark Sweeney, out there with Mike Pomerantz. It is. Jeff Rancor, Nick Markakis, and Tyler Flowers for the Braves here in the sixth inning. And Christian Friedrich spinning a good one. One run and four hits. Yes. It's your turn. It is? Yeah. yeah. For what? Didn't you know that? What? We had it all set up. It's all set up. You're gonna this is where you're gonna make that big, you know, announcement. What were you gonna say? Yeah. Come on. All of America's waiting. Got it on camera. Right there. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you want music first? How about a little music background here? I'm flummoxed. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball of the deep to short. Here's Ramirez, the long, strong arm for the out. Fran Corgon. I like the word flummoxed. Was I supposed to make an announcement? That's well, what we thought. You, I, okay. I guess well, you're going to keep right. it sacred. All right, well, you can keep it a secret. All right, you've prodded me enough, and I'm here to say. What? I'm announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. I'm voting. You're uh, right. I'm, you're I'm, I'm throwing my name in late. Well, that, that's for certain. What, what is your Better late than never. What is your platform? Love. <laughs> I love everybody. Oh, don't tell Sweeney that. You're going to get that hug thing going. Hug the mania. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Hey, I heard you guys ripping on the hug the other night. Who? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You said we? Yeah. Both of you. Really? Ripping? Yeah, you guys didn't like it. You guys? How do you not? Yeah. I'm in the middle of both of you guys. Chopped by the mound. Salarte will have to hurry, and it's there in time. Marquecas out 4 3. Two out to Tyler Flowers. You know me, I'm all about love. I'm a hugger. And so is uh, Swain. I love you, brother. I love you, too. It's a good man. Dick? Yeah, there's a time and place for everything. <laughs> man, you ought to see these guys in the parking lot. <laughs> I don't park over there. All right, two outs in the sixth inning. Friedrich with a couple of ground ball outs. Here's Tyler Flowers. He's walked and lined a single to right field.
Lauer's seven years on the south side of Chicago playing for the White Sox. The flower didn't quite bloom there. Got in some good years. Two and one. Well, the thing he's been doing this year for the Braves and getting an opportunity to catch pretty much on an everyday basis now is that right center approach, right field has been his specialty. You almost see him taking a look at setting his body in that position to try to go the other way. And he rips that one, but foul. Mm. And that got out there in a hurry off that padded area souvenir corner. Yeah, let's take a look at our San Diego fans of the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, home run ball yeah. off the bat of Jan Hervis Salarte. Yeah, Sante. See? Hugs. Full count to Flowers. He was drafted by the Braves back in 2005, a late pick, 33rd round. Eventually made it to the White Sox. Now back with the team that originally picked him. That ball is in there. The right three. Friedrich pitching a beauty. A one, two, three, sixth inning, and the Padres have a handsome six-one lead. I had a, a, a number, a dollar figure that I wanted, and if I and if I did not get that, I was going to go to school. You know, there's some you can't pass up an education. You know, just for a little bit amount of money. You know, I think it's something that you got to get a substantial amount of money to go uh, in the draft, and I was able to get that. But you know, I think uh, a lot of people don't necessarily value the uh, education part, and I did. Yeah, Tonight. that's Will Myers. Oh, I'm sorry. You no, know, tonight yeah, you have a cup of coffee with yeah. Dick and uh, Will. Will Myers are going to stroll down memory lane, talk about baseball and life off the field. So that's uh, tonight after Padres Live right here on Fox Sports San Diego. A job well done, Professor. Well, I enjoyed the uh, you know an informal situation, and as a former college professor, I I like the fact that he talked about the importance of education. He was uh, going to go to the University of South Carolina on a baseball scholarship, but was picked in the third round by uh, Kansas City, and yep. he said the money convinced him. But I, I have the feeling that he'll go back and. Continue his education when time might be right for him. Yeah, I think as a player, you want to balance that, especially how much of how important it is to get that education. A lot of these guys that come out of high school get it in their contracts mm -hmm. that they will be able to go back and get their education, which I think is really a necessity. That one slice followed by Norris. No, that if I were an agent for a ball player, any sport, you're going to sign my client. You right in there that when he wants to go to college, you give him a four years, you pay the bill. Now the key is too when you want to go 
back to school because they used to do it where they put it in their contract. We only had a certain amount of years to get that college education. Well, they have us if they have play, baseball players pretty busy throughout the year, which makes it very difficult to go and get that education and work through that. But did you did you get your full four years at the I University did. of Maine before I did. you signed? I did. I was uh, I. I was drafted as a junior. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really like where I was in the draft, and, and I was set up to be to graduate on time. So I went back to University of Maine. I thought an opportunity to go out and achieve your dream was important to me, but do it with an education behind me. There's a base hit to left field for Derek Norris. He's hit the ball hard again tonight, and finally something to show for it. Lead off base hit against Casey Kelly. Looks like a two seamer just a flat two seamer right into the swing path of Derek Norris. Well, it's nice to see Derek first of all squaring him up. They find it some holes. And hopefully that average on base percentage starts to creep up a little bit. You know the mentality that Derek Norris has to have is a one for four night is it's going to up the average but it's going to make him feel better in analyzing your at bats. He's had three productive at bats tonight and productive swings. Ninth hit for the Padres. Second hit off Casey Kelly. Alexei Ramirez looked to single to right field his last time. Six runs, nine hits for San Diego. One run, four hits for the Braves off Christian Friedrich. Element of surprise. I've always been a firm believer that you don't have to be a quick base runner to be a good base runner. Shortens his lead a little bit. And Casey Kelly's probably thinking, you know, Derek Norris is the catcher. He's not going to run. He uses the big leg kick. Derek slides in safely. It puts the pressure on Flowers. And what do you know? Derek Norris in scoring position. That's his first steal of the season. And a chase by Ramirez and he's gone. First strikeout for Kelly. Friedrich who has worked through six innings on 91 pitches. Trying to match his season high as a Padre go seven. Boy the results from Christian Friedrich and Drew Pomerantz two number one draft picks. One by Cleveland and uh, trying to think, and one by Colorado. Yep. And they both struggled uh, in their major league careers, but finding life here as a Padre. 4 3 on the put out. That moves Norris over to third. Two outs, and our greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. Let's see what's on the line. Hey, Justin Upton, who started slowly with the Tigers, a home run tonight, three runs batted in for the Bengals at Toronto. John Lester, eight innings of shutout ball, and then the 6 4 win for the Cubs at Philadelphia. Mark Trumbo at it again, 19th homer. He leads the majors, 4 1 win against Kansas City. Well, it looks like that Philly game, if Lester went eight innings, no earned runs. Either some unearned runs or the bullpen came in for an inning, and, but still, John Lester, man, Cubs got it going. Cubs have got it going. Are they the best team in baseball? I think right now they are. Don't you agree? On Boston, record. Boston, in the American League, maybe. Baltimore's playing well. Giants here in the NL West are 35 and 24. That doesn't compare to the Cubs record, but. He's the best to Padre hitter with a runner in scoring position. John Jay. Fouls that off the front foot. And that graphic we just saw the top of the order one through four doing some damage seven for 11 tonight. Cubs have five more wins than any other team 39 and 16 now 40 and 16. They have just the reverse of the Atlanta record 16 and 40. And 
National League Central race. Pittsburgh's 10 games back. Cincinnati 19 and a half out. Whoa. Yeah, that's discouraging when you're four games above 500 and you're 10 back. Now you're, you're thinking wild card, right? Yeah. I mean, and what? And Pittsburgh is that's the worst thing you can think of if you're the Pittsburgh Pirates, the wild card, because they've lost every time they've been in that wild card game. One and done. Got to go. One and two to Jay. He has a 425 batting average with runners in scoring position. That's in the top five in the National League. Got a man at third with two outs. Casey Kelly's throwing that cut fastball into John Jay. That was a dandy that last pitch. Ground ball right side. Johnson there to pick it out of the hole and throw out Jay. And the Padres leave a man at third. Six complete. Padres lead by five. Left four. Atlanta run for hits an error and stranded five. Christian Friedrich will go to work on the lower third of the batting order here in the top of the seventh inning. He's retired the last eight Braves in succession. Big blow for the Padres. That three runs in the third came on one swing. Jan Salarte's fourth home run of the year with two men on. And let's check our Chalola flamethrower. Well, the lefty Friedrich, he's not overpowering. That's 91. I'm not going to say that's hot sauce. I'm going to say that's ketchup. And sometimes ketchup is the perfect condiment to please your uh, your palate. And he's doing just fine tonight. And that ketchup with just a little touch of that Cholula. Yeah, that's, that's not perfect. a bad combo. Yeah. I've done that before. I think uh, Mark Swinney's off looking for that fish taco. <laughs> Might try that <laughs> formula. Garcia popped up and singled to left field. Breaking ball snaps onto the outside corner. Two strikes on Garcia, Kelly Johnson, and then the pitcher spot, Casey Kelly, or a pinch hitter. Pulled to the left side. Wallace gets a big hop and fires across for the out. Had mm. to bring Myers off the bag to make the tag. And uh, I agree with you that ooh, that's often a dangerous situation for that first baseman yes. having to flag down the runner and you're exposing your entire arm to the speed and bulk of the runner coming at you. Yeah, it's a good way to maybe break a wrist or uh, a forearm as Wallace backs up and now here's the throw. Now watch Will. He's got to go to his left and then the contact. Oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought on the second look. But it did take him in harm's way. So one out to Kelly Johnson, who is struck out and fouled out. Oh, ripped up the middle for a base hit. Might have got a piece of the glove of uh, Friedrich on its way out to center field. So that ends the nine consecutive batters retired by the Padre left-hander. 
For remember Kelly Johnson the first at bat. No. The strikeout on the breaking ball. Well I'll tell you what. Kelly Johnson is thinking I'm not going to get that curveball again. If I get a first pitch fastball I'm jumping all over it. I don't want to get in a hole. But for a moment it might have deflected off the glove slightly of Friedrich but you, you could see it cleanly passed him by on its way to center field and here's the pinch hitter Brandon Snyder. And a chance to go into the driver's seat brought to you by Kia and Friedrich has been in command he has driven the bus rather well tonight. Five hits one run. Breaking ball is in there to Snyder. Right hander with row getting loose. Limited duty for Snyder. Late swing, one and two. Just four at bats and one hit, so he's just been called up. Two hits for Darno, Flowers and Garcia and Johnson, and all five hit singles off Friedrich. Just a bit inside. That's well spotted. Hey, don't be surprised if he throws him a hammer right here. He's got the good feel of that breaking ball tonight. Lifted foul. There it is. 100 pitches now for Friedrich. He is starting for the fifth time, and in four of the five now, he's gone to the 100 pitch count. Well, it would be nice for Christian Friedrich to seal this deal up here in the seventh, a solid seven frames under his belt. Well, he threw the curveball, fouled off. There's a sinker. He shakes off. Now, maybe a slider down and in here. Fly ball to right. Kemp has to give ground. And makes the play. Back to first goes Johnson, two out. And the rooftop shot brought to you by Pinnacle on the park. Twenty thousand two oh three. The announced attendance on this Monday night. Enciarte has walked and scored, struck out and grounded out. Swing and a miss at the breaking ball. Well, Friedrich, his first start was at Milwaukee. Had to swallow a loss, even though he pitched six innings and allowed only one run and four hits. Had a no decision against the Dodgers. Came back with that fine seven inning outing against Arizona for a win. And last time out at Seattle picked up the win five innings of work gave up three earned runs. But basically five starts for Friedrich they've been solid. Two and one. Stan, the Padres split with Seattle, and of course they could very well have won those two. Then they take two out of three from Colorado. And now against the struggling Atlanta Braves, they hope to come up with a nice little 
stretch of victories. I think yeah. the reason why you see those good numbers for Friedrich is that breaking ball and a pie full count. And that's the one thing I think that Christian needs to, to work on is the consistency of the location of the fastball. A lot of fastballs are up and out of the zone. Andy Green positioning his infielders a little bit. Will Myers to move back a little bit, along with Solarte at second base. Runner goes. And the 3 2 foul back. That's lined to left field for a base hit. One hop to Upton. That'll move the runner Johnson to second. A couple of hits here in the seventh inning with two outs. And the shortstop Chase Darno steps up. Darno two for three. Well, no, three two. You're pretty much going to bank on a breaking ball, and that's the key, not to overswing. How easy a swing that is for NCRK. Choking up, taking it the other way. And with Friedrich over the 100 pitch mark, 109, he'll exit. A fine job tonight by the lefty. Game break, Dodger Stadium, Trevor Story. That rookie shortstop of the Rockies, his 16th homer of the year. And just as the Padres lead here, 6 to 1, Colorado with a 6 1 advantage in Los Angeles. That's in the eighth inning. So Christian Friedrich goes six and two thirds, responsible for two base runners, gives up six hits, a couple of walks, and seven strikeouts. Hey, even though the Braves are struggling, that's a good outing for Christian Friedrich. He made some good pitches in the zone. Now he hands the ball over to Carlos Villanueva. He's your go-to guy anytime, anywhere. That's more successful against lefties than righties of Villanueva. He's got that changeup, the breaking ball that goes down and away to the lefties. Faces the right-handed hitting Chase Darno. Starts him with a slow breaking ball outside. Johnson at second. And CRT at first. Sharply hit up the middle, base hit. Johnson around third, he'll score. It's six to two. On the third, 
And Ciarte as Darno comes up with his third hit of the night. His first RBI of the season. Good fastball, poorly located. And once again, remember, Villanueva does not throw that hard. Carlos is about 89, so he has to be really pinpoint. And as a hitter, you really have to stay back. Let that ball come to you rather than drift and sends it right back up the middle. So first and third, two outs. That run charged to Friedrich. And he's responsible for NCRT as well. Freddie Freeman, glad to see Friedrich leave. He struck out twice and fly to center. Going for a three run home run with that swing. Boy, when a hitter is struggling, you can really almost see the wheel spinning in his head. And that's when you know you've got the upper hand as a pitcher. A run home, first and third, two outs. And another swing and a miss. Two breaking balls. I mean, he's such a talented hitter. He's got such an uppercut, too. Yeah. I mean, the swing path of that bat. Tried to get him to fish for another breaking ball. One and two. Slap foul. Count stays at one and two. Jeff Rancourt would be next. In the inning, a trio of singles Johnson, Enciarte, and the RBI single Darno. Rancourt has an RBI on the ground out. Pulled the first foul. Villanueva trying to slam the door on this seventh inning. Braves with a run home to cut the lead to 6 2. Side. Well, let's see if that was pretty much a show me pitch. You don't want to throw a fastball right down the middle to Freddie Freeman. <laughs> see if he goes back with the breaking ball. And there's a double fan there. Yeah. Tony Gwynn, Ken Caminiti. He's splitting his favorites there, huh? Yep. Couple of San Diego Padre Hall of Famers. The 2 2 pitch. In the dirt. So full count. That'll give Darno. Darno at uh, first base a running start. Braves trying to climb back in this one. And in this situation, Will Myers will play behind the runner. You got the lefty, you get a breaking ball. You want Will Myers to have more range down there at first base. Playing behind that runner. He'll back up on the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Freeman goes down swinging for the third time. The Braves settle for one. Stretch half of the seventh. The Padres lead it six to two.
Time now for the Bill Howe plays or pitches of the game. Hey, Christian Friedrich had the breaking ball. The first one to Freddie Freeman. The second one, Kelly Johnson looking sick. Oh, Freddie Freeman again? Oh, we've been down that path before. Christian Friedrich, the breaking ball has been a good field tonight. He twirled the gem. He was locked in. Tough on the left-handed hitters throughout the night. A total of seven strikeouts for Friedrich. Our Bill Howe plays of the game. The new pitcher for the Braves, Chris Withrow. Withrow, former Dodger, was a first round pick by the Dodgers uh, nine years ago. And not bad splits for the right hander, his 16th game. Came over to the Braves with Juan Uribe in exchange for Alberto Calespo, Juan Jaime, Eric Stoltz, and Ian Thomas, Tom, Thomas last May. Walks are an issue for Withrow. Slider, fastball, a curveball. 26 year old Texan. Myers continuing his hot hitting, two for three tonight. Scoring two runs. Myers two for four yesterday with a home run at RBI double. He had three hits on Friday night. Seven and three games. Slaps that one foul. So Friedrich goes six and two thirds, allows two earned runs, six hits, walked two, struck out seven as he seeks his third win of the season. Supported by a nine hit attack with Myers, Kemp, and Solarte in the middle of the order, all with two hits. Solarte with a three run homer. The inside backs Myers off the plate, counts two and two. Matt Kemp and then Solarte to follow. Kemp with a couple of RBIs tonight. 41 now on the season. I think Will wants that pitch back. Pitch number five, Nissan Fox Tracks. Up, middle in. Something that he could crush. Kemp with the 41 runs batted in. That moves him into second place in the National League behind Nolan Arenado, 47 for Arenado. Although Story with a homer, he'll also move up on that list. Two and two. Ground ball, third baseman Garcia across to Freeman. High, but the tag is made. Myers tried to do the sharp right turn, elude the tag. But Freeman gets the job done. Yeah, the only time that I think a runner should slide into first base is first of all, feet first. Secondly, if you're far enough away from the back to where you can see the first baseman kind of having to jockey himself and jump or whatever, and then slide towards the foul territory part to kick it with your foot so you don't run underneath that first baseman and cause a collision but you know easier said than done you're going down there you're concentrating trying to hit that bag. Camp is two for two a single an RBI double and a sack fly off the mask. We've got Ted Barrett. Looks like his throat protector. Uh, does this get a piece of it? Oh yeah, it kind of snapped one of the. Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah, you can see it fall into the ground right there. Need some zip ties down there. Anybody got any zip ties? <laughs> Just missed one and one. 
You know, those trainers have everything in their bag of tricks down there on that bench. I'm sure, they need, they've got a zip tie down there. And that device first used by Steve Yeager of yeah. the Dodgers has been a very valuable added piece of equipment for catchers and umpires. That happened at San Diego Stadium. He was on deck. Piece of the bat broke. He was on deck and it got Steve Yeager in the throat. Oof. And if you remember back at old San Diego slash Jack Murphy slash Qualcomm Stadium the on deck circle was close to home plate. So they develop that device now mm -hmm. almost common uh, equipment. Is that the, there's the piece <laughs> yeah. that was snapped off on that foul tip? Fastball up and in. He almost grazed the uniform of Kemp. Four seamer. See if he goes with the breaking ball away here. See a lot of pitchers move the feet, back him off. A little spinner down and away. There it is, taken for strike three. Two away. First strikeout with throw. And it's time now for our Carl Jr. star of the game, Jan Salarte. And that'll get you a star. A three run home run. Off starter Williams Perez back in the third inning. And that broke the 1 1 time, gave the Padres a 4 1 advantage that they have not relinquished. 6 to 2 now here in the seventh, two outs. Salarte also an infield hit on a liner back through the box against Casey Kelly. Ninety three on the fastball strike one. Right back with the heater. Went through a couple of years with the Dodgers. <laughs> Dead time there. 46 games with the Dodgers, 1 3, no losses, a 2 7 3 ERA. Promising pitcher, but uh, away on a trade to Atlanta. And one of the many young arms uh, as Atlanta rebuilds their roster. Casey Kelly, of course, from the Padres, another. Yeah, look at where the Phillies have done it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're on the verge of doing something really good there in Philadelphia with those Phils. Another foul. There's the matchup tomorrow night, 6:30 hour TV time here on Fox Sports San Diego. Colin Ray goes for win number four. Aaron Blair, 0 and 4 on the season. Soft fly ball in the shallow center and in the shift it's a shortstop Darno that goes out to collect it. A one two three inning for Withrow. Seven complete. Padres lead by four.
Braves in the eighth inning. Mark and I are working on Padres Live, the postgame show. We've got highlights from around the league, including this ball game. Cubs and Phillies with John Lester on the mound, and he was dealing. Mike Jake Arrieta got his first loss. And what has to happen for the Chicago Cubs, John Lester has to go out there and throw a gem. That's what you have, that one-two punch, righty-lefty combination. And Jason Hayward with the big home run. That was really what they needed. Cubs fans have been waiting to see the power out of Hayward. He's the defensive specialist. Finally, a little bit of offense tonight for the Cubs. First team to 40 wins and fastest team to 40 wins since the 2001 Mariners. Dick and Mark. All right. Thank you, Mike and Mark. We'll look forward to your report in the postgame show. Carlos Villanueva, who came in to get the final out in the seventh inning, will face Francoeur, Marquecas, and Flowers here in the eighth. Remember earlier, Dick, I mentioned that uh, Frenchie, they call him. Jeff Francoeur is one of my favorite players of all time. When he was with the Padres, I do interviews sometime before the game. Yeah. We sat down at Wrigley Field. Usually the interviews go like three, three and a half minutes. I think we talked for eight and a half minutes. All interesting, yes. Also. And it was great. And it's all because of Jeff. I mean, he's so gregarious and so energetic and so happy and just a fun loving guy. You toss him one question and he'll talk for a minute and a half, which is great. Now, he's never lost sight of the fact that a Major League Baseball player does lead a privileged life. Mm -hmm. And he's very happy about wearing that uniform and coming out every day. Waves at that one, two and two. Just a real pleasure to be around. Yeah, we were lucky to have him here in San Diego for the short time. 155 home runs, a career 262 batting average. Had a 29 home run season back in 10 years ago with Atlanta. That's yeah, going to be a tough play. And Ramirez has no play. Another swinging bunt. Fran Coeur drove in the first run of the game with a similar play. And Ramirez was able to throw him out. Saturday. It's Saturday, folks. Baseball night in America. It returns with one of the best rivals, rivalries in the, as the NL West leading Giants take on the Dodgers at 4 p.m. It's Pacific on Fox. Then the Indians battle the Angels in a game you can only see on FS1 at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. It's baseball all Saturday. And, of course, the Padres and Rockies will also be part of the triple header here on Fox Sports San Diego. So an infield scratch hit for Fran Coor brings up Marquecas. He's 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a long fly to left. And he takes a strike. Eight hits now for Atlanta. The second allowed by Villanueva. And Looper Ramirez able to go up and get it. A soft liner and the shortstop position just right for the first down. You know, I would guess as a shortstop or a middle infielder, those are one of the tougher plays because you've got to time it just right. It's not a P rod and it's not a big pop fly. It's one of those in-betweeners to where you're going back and if you jump too early, you're going to be coming down and it's going to be off your glove. So a nice job by Alexei. He's been doing it for years. Flowers walked, singled, and struck out. Dodgers lost to Colorado tonight, six to one. Giants idle, so they pick up a half game. San Francisco now leads. By four over LA. Boy, the Mariners, after that incredible victory coming from 10 runs down here, went to Texas, got swept, and then they lost tonight to Cleveland at home. Well, they were basically tied for first place for the Rangers and they've lost four games to Texas in four days. Jim Johnson veteran right hander. Oh and two the Flowers runner at first. Rancour. In the dirt.
Padres trying to lock this one up and make it 11 in a row at Petco. 11 and 0 against the Braves. Strike three on the outside corner. Second strikeout for Villanueva. Oh, a little movement here, some big movement there, a fastball once in a while, and Flowers just lets this one go by. A slider right on the outside corner for the strikeout. Ryan Bookter getting loose in the Padre pen. Not a save situation. As yet, Garcia single in three advance. That ball hit high and deep to center. Jay, boy, he just missed that one. <laughs> a long out to center. The Padres are coming up the bottom of the eighth inning with a 6 2 lead. Padres baseball brought to you by San Diego's best window company. Simply great windows. By Petco, your complete pet store. And by your San Diego County Lexus dealers. The Padres with a 6-2 lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning and veteran Jim Johnson. 32 years of age. Baltimore, Oakland, Detroit. Two games with the Dodgers last year. Now back in Atlanta. Big drink of water, tall drink of water, Jim Johnson. All six, six of them. 250. 17th game, high ERA. And sometimes trailing by four. Go out there and get it in it. So Brian Snitker, the interim manager for the Braves, given Johnson. A chance to throw up a scoreless frame with the fastball, curveball, changeup. High 80s, low 90s for the right hander. Back in 2012 and 2013, he rated among the very best closers in baseball. Saved 51 and 50 games for the Orioles in 2012 2013. Not bad, 101 saves in two years. And then he's had a little trouble since at Oakland, at Detroit. Split last year, Atlanta and the Dodgers. Upton sails that one foul. Not going to run with the fielder's choice. It's 0 for 3 tonight. Wallace and Norris to follow. Well, I mentioned it all the time about how a team wants to try to get into slam range, and that's where the Braves sit right now, trailing 6 to 2. So it's important for the Potters if they can score a run or two here to get a little insurance. They stack it up on the left side, shifting into the power of Upton. 
with Freeman 25 feet off the bag at first and tried to go to right field. And one of the 20,203 here tonight with a souvenir. There you go. Swing and a miss. 93 mile an hour fastball and Upton strikes out. Wallace is 0 for 3. High fastball for Seamer. You can see the rotation there and how far behind Melvin Upton Jr. is. Going up and out of the strike zone by design. Right, this Jankowski getting loose. Apparently he's going to come in defensively for Kemp. In the ninth inning. Ball one inside to Wallace. That ball line to left, and it's in the gap and bounces into the seats for a ground rule double. Wallace and the Padres now hit double figures tonight, the 10th hit off Atlanta pitching. That was a laser to left. Two seamer. Amarista is going to run for him. That's strong right there. And Amarista will probably stay in the game and play second base with Solardi moving from second to third. Chance to pick up that insurance run. Norris and Ramirez with a man in scoring position. Norris has lined out, flied out, and lined a single last time. Pulls that sharply foul. Breaking ball outside and low. Okay, now when I'm president, you know what I'm going to do? A yeah. baseball for every kid. Do you see the smiles that a baseball yeah, brings to a course. kid's face? No, yeah, it doesn't matter what age the kid is either. Absolutely. Spread some happiness, joy, love. Might even be better than a car in every garage. <laughs> Give everyone a baseball. What was it back in the day? A chicken in every pot? What was that it? It was one of those. And I think back in the FDR days, you, you know, know what to it was? break us out of the depression, the idea of getting a car in every garage. Yeah. See, look at how happy those kids are. Line drive, base hit to right center. Here comes the insurance run. Enciarte sliding to get the ball, but in the second goes Derek Norris with an RBI double. Oh, it's good to see him making. Solid contact and being rewarded for it. Boy, that ball sounded so sweet off that sweet spot. Johnson with the two seamer and he driving it that way. Oh, you gotta love that sound. That was picture perfect for Derek Norris. So the RBI double Norris his 15th run batted in and it's a seven to two Padre lead. Ramirez a single and three at bats tonight. Pair of doubles Wallace and Norris. They get the Padres to the seven run mark. Ground ball foul. Braves scored one in the first. The Padres answered with a run in the first. Then the three run homer by Salarte in the third made it four to one. The Padres picked up a couple of more in the fifth inning. 
RBI double by Kemp and a Upton ground out. They got a sixth run home. Line drive to the third baseman. Uh, Ramirez robbed on that liner, but Garcia able to get into the hole and stab it. Two away. That ball was actually hit so hard, it's kind of hooking towards Garcia. Hector Sanchez is going to bat for the pitcher Villanueva. We haven't seen Sanchez for a while. Switch hitting backup catcher. I remember when Hector was with the Giants and I had a chat with Bruce Bochy, the manager of the Giants. And you know, Hector was backing up, of course, with Buster Posey. Uh -huh. And he said that Sanchez could very easily be a starting catcher at any other ball club. That's how much he liked him, and that's what he thought about it. Swings a good bat. He's five for 13 as a Padre. And that includes a home run. Two outs. Norris with the RBI double out at second. Well, there are tattoos and there are tattoos, but on the neck, I'm not sure I could go go that far, go that deep. Oh, huh? Come on, sure you could. Oh man, that's got to hurt. Huh? Could charge your lightning bolt right on your neck there after calling all those <laughs> AFC games in your career. You see with the professor with a lightning bolt right yeah, on his neck. But I'm not going to show you my tattoo. <laughs> Come on, if professor. You're I'll run pay for, for it. If you're going to run for president, I'm going to have a nice big heart. 3 and 0 to Sanchez. Top of the order, and John Jay would be next. This guy wants him to add on. At the knees, three and one. My campaign slogan would be make America hug again. Even in uh, Congress? Sure, why not? That'd be a real victory, huh? And it's three and two, a breaking ball. A couple of pitches directed right at the knees of Sanchez. Well, I'm thinking it's going to try to challenge him with a fastball right here. But you never know. He's got confidence in that breaking ball as well. Check swing. Didn't go. Ball four. Now Sanchez trots to first. He joins Norris at second. And the hitter's John Jay. Jay uh, doubled his first time up and scored the first primary run. Grounded out twice to second and tried to left sense. Get word from the Atlanta clubhouse. Uh, Williams Perez, the starting pitcher who left the game with an injury in the fifth inning. A right tricep soreness is that could be anything from minimal to very serious. Triceps muscle the back of the right arm. Upper arm. Two strikes now on Jay. <laughs> uh oh, there's a menace right there trying to create something. Looper that Garcia has a beat on in foul territory, and the eighth inning comes to an end. The Padres. Add on with back to back doubles. Wallace and Norris hit seven to two.
Phillip, the slow roller off the bat of Francoeur, got to Atlanta's first run home in Ciarte. Padres tied it up with a sack fly from Matt Kemp in the first one all, and then the big blow of the night with two men on. Solarte dumps one into the right field bleachers, his fourth home run of the year, and the Padres led four to one. He'd go on to add three more runs and a seven to two lead as Ryan Buchter comes in to pitch. Kelly Johnson, the pitcher spot, and the leadoff man in Ciarte scheduled. Really good year for Ryan Buchter. And the one other thing that I like is that the uh, the breathing room that he has as he tries to shut down the Braves here in game one of this series. Amarista stays in the game as we indicated earlier and goes to second base with Solarte from second over to third. So the infield Solarte at third Ramirez at short Amarista second and Myers at first. Johnson a single his last time one for three. Fastball at 92 a strike. Booker a very pleasant surprise. 28th appearance. There's another strike. 2.16 ERA and opposing hitters batting 148 against Booker's offerings. Swing and the miss strike three. One down here in the top of the ninth. Now I'll tell you what. Interim manager Brian Snitker is probably looking out at Brian Ryan Buchter and saying how could we the Braves organization lose this guy played one game with the Braves a couple years ago Ryan did that was back in 2014 one game one inning he got the win <laughs> and then at 29 he finally gets a chance to make the roster on opening day and is taking full advantage of that chance. A.J. Pruszynski is going to pinch hit the switch hitting catcher. Amarista goes way out into shallow right field to rove against the full side. 211 batting average for the veteran. Had a good major league life. Misses one and or two and oh now. High pop up. Only Ramirez on the left side, so he better be calling. And makes the play. Two outs here in the night. And to the leadoff hitter, Ender Enciarte. He's walked and singled. One for three tonight. Fryer really in a happy mood. He likes oh, Mondays. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. He's going to be dancing out in the restaurant area afterwards. Ball one and Ciarte. Padres trying to lock up their 24th win of the season. Gain a half game on idle San Francisco sitting 11 games off the pace. Have to wait a while. A line single, Enciarte. His second hit tonight. He's on his way for two and will make it easily. Two out double for Enciarte. Ninth hit of the night for the Braves. Two by Enciarte. Darno, who steps into the batter's box, has three. And that's the first extra base hit tonight of the nine hits. Well, stay tuned after this one. A lot going on. Mike Pomerantz, Mark Sweeney with Padres Live, the postgame show. Going to hear from manager Andy Green. Talk about this first game of the three game series with the Braves. And I hope you'll stay tuned after the postgame show to the uh, coffee show with Will Myers. We'll get to know him 
more intimate basis. Arno swings and misses. He knocked it around with a single in the seventh. His first run batted into the season. And it came uh, in his 74th at bat. Swing and a miss, strike two. Turn back and firing. Ryan Bookter, a strike away from. Closing up shop here at Petco Park on this Monday night. is over. Strikeout seals the deal for Bookler and uh, the Padres win game one seven to two Mike Pomerantz. Dick thanks very much for Mark and I see in the post game show we're going to hear from Andy Green his thoughts on taking the first game of this series and Christian Friedrich all dialed in.